The Senator from New Jersey. Uh, I am pleased to join my colleagues uh, in speaking about the Disclose Act and why this is so critically important for our democracy. And I appreciate the leadership of several of our colleagues in this respect. For the last two years, our democracy has been hijacked by powerful special interests. And tonight, we had the opportunity to begin repairing the fabric of our nation's democracy before permanent damage is done. Unfortunately, Republicans decided not to put our democracy back on the right track. Out there in this presidential election season, murky special interests are spending unlimited amounts of corporate money. It's possible even that foreign governments could determine it's in their interests to funnel vast amounts of money to influence American political elections. Think about, Madam President, a country that does currency manipulations, that violates trade agreements, that steals intellectual property rights. Those of us who oppose those actions of countries who take those type of actions against the national economic interests of the United States could easily see that money flow through U.S. subsidiaries that ultimately would end up in campaigns to say, we do not want this member of Congress who is standing up for the interests of the American middle class and American businesses uh, against our interests to be able to continue to manipulate our currency, to be able to continue to steal intellectual property rights, to be able to continue with impunity to violate trade agreements. That's possible as the law exists now. Now, Madam President, I think we have a patriotic obligation to protect our electoral system from that kind of influence. These anonymous, secretive interests, mostly corporate aren't spending money because they want to feel like a part of the process. They're spending money for a purpose. They have a reason and no doubt a self-interest. You don't spend tens of millions of dollars without having an interest, without having a self-interest. Is this what our founding fathers had in mind? We should know who they are and what their agenda is. Since the Supreme Court made its ruling in Citizens United, allowing corporate interests to spend money unlimitedly, the money has been more than trickling in. No, the money has been a torrent, a tsunami of unlimited cash. According to the New York Times, independent groups have spent at least $118 million since the start of the presidential campaign. One super PAC alone has spent over $57 million. And if you don't believe me, listen to Michael Toner. He's the former chairman of the Federal Election Commission who said, quote, I can tell you from personal, personal experience, the money's flowing, the money's flowing. And this begs the question, where is this money flowing from and where is it going? Who's behind the cash? And what's to prevent foreign government interests to be influencing our elections? What's to stop foreign influence in American elections other than complete disclosure? If corporations are spending money to influence elections, it's for the sole purpose of improving their own bottom lines. And this undermines the very essence of our democracy where individual citizens are the ones who should determine the outcome of elections not murky, shadowy, multi-billion dollar corporate interests, or worse, a foreign government. Disclosure, full disclosure. That's what we need, and it's what we should demand before the people lose control of our electoral process. That's why I introduced a, another bill, the Shareholder Protection Act, a common sense proposal that gives real people a say in the process. If the Supreme Court's position, which obviously is the law of the land, is that a corporation's money belongs, uh, a corporation is a person and therefore can go ahead and spend in federal elections, well, since the corporation's money belongs to the shareholders, it's only right that they have a voice 
on how their money is going to influence elections. Uh, my bill would require shareholder approval of corporate political spending. This basic step will ensure that corporations' political activities actually reflect the will of their shareholders. If, as the Supreme Court ruled, corporations have free speech rights, then their shareholders should have control of that speech. The Shareholder Protection Act does that by giving shareholders the opportunity to exercise their free speech rights. But until we can reach consensus on my proposal, the least we can give the American people is the right to know who is trying to influence them. These are basic principles, I think, of a democracy. There are basic principles in our democracy that both parties should be able to agree on. Imagine the influence of the big five oil companies on American elections. In March, 47 U.S. Senators voted against repealing $24 billion in oil subsidies over the next 10 years. We know from their publicly disclosed donations that these 47 Senators received over $23 million in donations from oil companies over the course of their careers. So after the oil companies fought tooth and nail to protect the taxpayer subsidies, those $24 billion they get, which costs us as taxpayers $76 every second, do you think they wouldn't spend millions more in support of what they want? And now they can give unlimited amounts of money to super PACs without ever disclosing the contributions. Another example, Alliance Resource Group, a coal company, gave over $2.4 million to Carl Rove's super PAC, American Crossroads, which then turned around and funded advertisements targeting important environmental protection regulations. They are using unlimited corporate funds to influence our elections and our nation's energy policy to protect their bottom line, regardless of the air that we breathe, regardless of the consequences of the air that we breathe, regardless of in states like mine that suffer from too high an incidence of respiratory illnesses and cancers, basically spending whatever it takes to buy their right to continue to pollute the air we collectively breathe. Now, I could go on and on with the examples of why special interests would very well spend in federal elections to dictate policies that ultimately would hurt everyone but the special interests. That's what we're fighting against. This legislation is the first step in undoing that. The American people deserve to know who's giving more than $10,000. I don't believe that's too much to ask. As a matter of fact, all of us who run in this body for the United States Senate, all who run in the House of Representatives, all of our contributors are subject to disclosure. So if the average citizen back at home, when they give a donation, that's subject to disclosure, why can we not at least have that corporation be disclosing when they give over $10,000 to one of these shadowy super PACs? So the average citizen has to disclose, but the corporations don't. Isn't something wrong with that equation? I see why we can't get a vote on the other side of the aisle, because overwhelmingly, they are receiving the benefits of this undisclosed, shadowy money. But is that truly the American way? Is that why we came to this institution? I thought we came for the very essence of what our democracy is about, which is clear, open transparency at the end of the day. Is that what the average voter wants to see in terms of this democracy? I don't think so, Mr. President. So I leave you with a simple message. Our democracy was founded on the principle of an open and honest debate. But without disclosure, we can get neither. All we get is commercials on television that we don't know who's paying for them. We don't know what their interests are. We only know the negativity that flows from it, but we get none of the people behind it, none of the corporations behind it. And again, they will not spend tens of millions of dollars just simply to participate in the process. If they want to participate in the process just like every other citizen, they can disclose. There's no reason they shouldn't disclose, no reason why any company spending money 
and wants to make the case that we think this is good public policy, fine, let them disclose. But to vote against disclosure as a simple element of preserving our democracy is beyond my comprehension. And I hope that as the electorate sees these advertisements without disclosure, that they will say uh, to themselves, who are the people behind these advertisements? Where is all these millions of dollars coming from? And what is it that they want for their money? When we ask those questions, in the absence of the disclosure we simply want, I think we'll come to understand who are these shadowy figures and what they really want. That's why we should pass the Disclose Act, and I hope we'll get another chance to get our colleagues to reconsider. With that, Mr. President, I yield the floor.